Welcome to Making Money. This is Matt McCall. Thanks for joining me. We got a special show coming up for you today. We're going to cover what I consider the biggest breakthrough in medicine in decades. We're going to talk about what that is and this early investment that could reap a lot of money over the next years and decade plus. It is going to be a game changer for the world and a lot of people being affected by this ailment. Learn what it is and what stocks are leading the way. Coming up right now on Making Money. Over 1 million people around the world follow Wall Street veteran Mark Chaikin for his shockingly accurate stock market predictions. He just gave them a dire warning. Mark says, we're about to witness an historic stock market shakeup that can soon create devastating losses for investors who don't know what's coming. And as a result, you only have 90 days to move your money. You see, Mark spent 50 years on Wall Street at some of the most prestigious hedge funds in history. And he's been on Fox Business and CNBC countless times. But this is a financial story no one else is telling. And if you let this take you by surprise, you could be in for a world of pain. He explains everything in a brand new free report available at rollingcrash2023.com. He includes a name and ticker of a popular stock that could be directly impacted by what's happening as well. Mark warned of the beloved pet brand Chewy before it fell 45%. Tech company C Limited before it fell 66%. Furniture company Wayfair before it fell 76%. Social media favorite Snap before it fell 36%. And food delivery company DoorDash before it fell 65%. Mark even called the Amazon crash before the FANG stock fell 35%. So you want to avoid the stock in this new report immediately. Again, Simply go to rollingcrash2023.com for your free copy of this new report. Again, welcome to Making Money. This is Matt McCall. Thanks for joining me. We're going to do a bit of a special show here today. Uh, We're going to dedicate this entire show to a trend that I've been looking into for many years. Uh, It has changed dramatically over the last six to 12 months. Uh, It's become a trend that is now in the headlines, Uh, it's made its way into Hollywood and celebrities, and made its way into a lot of average people's homes, and maybe not the drugs themselves yet, uh, but the discussion has made its way around, and it's something, again, that could be an absolute game changer for many, many people uh, around the world that is suffering uh, from this ailment. So again, I think this is the biggest breakthrough medicine uh, that we're gonna see in decades. Um, comparable to going back to some of the cancer treatments that we've seen over the last couple of decades. Um, Statins coming out to help lower cholesterol. Uh, This is truly, again, uh, a game changer, uh, akin to potentially um, medicine for hypertension, for high blood pressure. I mean, these these are all ailments that that affect many, many people, uh, and this one does as well. And you probably already have an idea of what this uh, ailment and I call it the disease is, and that is obesity. And obesity and and what um, they consider overweight, according to the BMI, which is your body mass index, um, it's it's something that that a lot of people, uh, unfortunately, uh, are suffering with. And I have all my notes over here. So I'm going to be going back and forth because uh, the amount of information when it comes to healthcare and medicine is just overwhelming. I want to make sure I give you the correct numbers. But, you know, you can call obesity uh, an epidemic. You know, some people argue, but it's something that, that is, is spreading. It's affecting many people and it's leading to uh, early death due to um, other ailments that come from that, whether it be diabetes, uh, whether it be heart disease. Um, stress. I mean, there's so many other um, angles that this leads to. Uh, and, and, and again, it, 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 a lot of it leads back to very unhealthy living. Uh, we'll talk about that. Not all obesity comes from unhealthy living. That's not true. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but many times it does go back to very unhealthy living. Uh, you know, nearly 40% of the world's population is considered either um, overweight or obese. And if you take a look at what that really is as far as categorizing it, uh, if you do your BMI, your body mass index, and it's above 25 uh, to 30, uh, it's considered overweight. If it's above 30, it's considered obese. So four to 10 people have a BMI over 25. 
And that's, that's pretty high. That being said, I put my height and weight into the BMI. Five foot 11, 180 pounds. Um, and it came back at 25.2, borderline overweight. And not to sound conceited or anything, but if you ask anybody who knows me, uh, they would not say I look overweight by any means. Um, I work out six days a week. I play pickleball five days a week. I go to the gym most days. I go for walks and I eat very healthy. I, the downside is, yes, I like to have a martini or two uh, a couple nights a week. So that's very empty calories. Um, but th that being said, the, the old school way of looking at it may, may not be true. However, there are a lot of people, though, that do fall in that category right around the 25 and above uh, that are not necessarily um, in shape at 180 pounds. They may be way out of shape at 180 pounds and having a certain fat that does lead to potential issues and then, you know, could be pre-diabetic at some point. Uh, I know I am not. I've had blood work done in the last couple of months, so I know I'm not. I went to my longevity clinic, as you know, I talked about that and uh, Dr. Carlsberg on the show. Um, but it, my point is, according to the studies, four to 10 people either overweight or obese and that leads to a lot of other issues. Um, there's a World Obesity Fe uh, Federation, believe it or not, that actually looks into this because it is such an issue that affects so many people, literally billions of people around the world. Um, they believe by 2035, which is a short 12 years from now, that over half the world will be overweight or obese. That's going to jump from 40% to 50% above that. So you're looking at over 25% more people. That, that's increasing by 25%, that number from 40 to above 50. Big increase. Very big and very, very concerning as far as uh, the amount of money that health systems in every country on the world spends on obese people, again, because it leads to so many other health issues. They predict that the global economic uh, impact of overweight and obesity will reach $4.32 trillion annually by 2035. Let me repeat that. $4.32 trillion economic impact globally due to overweight and obese people in this world by 2035. That's a T. That's trillion dollars, folks. You know, almost 3% of the global GDP uh, will be affected by that, by obesity. About 3% of all GDP. If you want to compare it to something, that's about the effect that uh, the pandemic had on GDP, COVID. For the Americas, that number is going to be closer to 3.7%. Even though there's a lot of studies that show some of the emerging markets and the underdeveloped countries are actually having a bigger issue recently with obesity uh, because it's just not being treated or looked at it and being ignored. Here in America, yes, maybe you know, we have some more options to, to help with that. And we're going to talk about that in a minute from a medicine standpoint. Uh, that being said, we also are inundated with uh, fast food in America. And let's be honest and let's be frank, a lot of really shitty food. Uh, it may taste good, but it's just really, really bad for you. Um, it's always amazing when I spend a couple of months in Nicaragua, uh, the place where I live, everything's organic. It comes from farms. It comes from uh, the garden. And uh, I eat the same amount. I eat the same similar stuff, uh, you know, meats and veggies and fruits, uh, some grains here and there but uh, much healthier because you're not having all the chemicals put in everything, all this processed and canned and packaged food. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect. I love a potato chip from time to time. It's probably one of my favorite things in the world. So I, I, I do indulge, but um, uh, the, the point is uh, here in the developed countries, we, it's very easy to stray. Um, about half of, uh, of people that are obese, it's caused by genetics. Uh, so it's not just, again, uh, Eating bad, being unhealthy, not working out, not rock, not walking, not getting up enough, sitting at your desk all day. Uh, so I'm not blaming people for being lazy. I think there's a lot of lazy people out there uh, that simply do not want to get in shape and it's, uh, it's weighing on the healthcare systems. That being said, I know there's some that are, are driven by genetics, so I'm empathetic towards that. I just don't have to deal with that and I'm lucky. Deal with other things, but not that. Uh, about 4 million people die annually from obesity. This is again, coming from the studies. Um, the leading factor uh, of type 2 diabetes, as you guessed it, obesity leads to type 2 diabetes, which is a major issue all around the world right now. Major, major issue. You know, there's a study that shows that women with a BMI of 35 are 90 times higher 
the probability is 90 times higher that they get diabetes in a woman with a BMI of 23. That's amazing, 90 times. This is a fairly decent sized uh, study as well. Increases risk of cancer, increases risk of heart issues. I mean, it's everything, folks. It, it, it's, you know, the, the four horsemen, the four killers, all have some ties to obesity, can be brought on or worsened due to obesity. You know, now you have social media and uh, uh, celebrities getting into this. And the point of what I'm talking about here is not all this negative. I had to, I had to paint the negative picture to, to get you fearful of this because there, this is an issue. Now, whether you deal with obesity or not, the point is uh, it, it's a major, major problem and it's been a major problem and it's going to get worse if we don't do something soon. And that's why we're seeing, I'm sure you've heard about all these weight loss drugs that are coming out. Uh, many of them were uh, originally diabetes drugs, uh, and now they are weight loss drugs. Uh, and we're going to talk about specific ones here in a minute, uh, specific companies, specific drugs, and what they're creating, where the approval process is right now, um, and, and kind of what they do to the body. Uh, I, I will say this. Um, it has become very, very popular as of late because you are having a lot of celebrities talk about it. And you can see it because celebrities are always getting their picture taken, how much weight they've lost. And, you know, Elon Musk came out. He said that he was uh, using some weight loss injections we're going to talk about here in a second. So to get rid of some unwanted weight. But you're seeing it everywhere. And <laughs> whatever celebrities do or say, I typically do the opposite. So I, not that I'm saying that this is good uh, and do what celebrities say. Uh, what I'm saying is it does bring it to light. And because people, for some reason, put celebrities on a pedestal, uh, they see this as uh, a bit of an opportunity um, you know, for them to push kind of their, you know, their uh, weight loss. And, you know, at first they didn't want to admit to a lot of celebrities because they didn't want to say that they were quote unquote cheating, not just going to the gym and working out and eating better, you know, and, and maybe it is cheating, but if it's going to save people's lives and the side effects uh, uh, do not, you know, overtake uh, the benefits of it, heck, I, I'm, I'm all for it. But again, it, it, we'll, we'll talk about the drugs here in a minute. So, uh, what a lot of these drugs have right now is uh, it's based off what's called a GLP-1. Um, GLP-1s were originally a GLP-1 agonist, sorry, GLP-1 agonist. Uh, they were originally uh, diabetes drugs. And uh, what they do is they'll, they'll mimic hormones. That's what the GLP does. It mimics these hormones, uh, these agonists, and that the body is going to pre be producing naturally. Um, and the, the one that the, specifically the GLP is going after is the is a hormone that is produced um, after a meal and what it does is slows down the rate of gastric emptying so it makes you basically feel full allowing the, that food to kind of stay in your stomach a little bit longer it makes you feel full so you don't overeat and if you stay full or the full feeling you obviously will eat less you know maybe some people stress eat when they're full anyway but in, for the most part if you feel full you're not going to be going to the fridge grabbing a pint of ice cream it's just not going to be what happens um, so again they want to eat less it also controls the uh, hypothalamus, and the hypothalamus is a part of the brain that controls hunger uh, and also going to help break down fat. So again, obviously, direct correlation uh, to obesity there. And uh, one of the GLP-1s uh, that was created by Novo Nord Nordisk, and we're talking about the company in a second, is NVO as a symbol, uh, is semaglutide, uh, S-E-M-A-G-L-U-T-I-D, semaglutide. And uh, that is a, a class of, of, of medicines obviously known as... Uh, um, GLP-1s, which is uh, glucagon-like peptide ones, uh, and they're called receptor agonists, RAs. Uh, you'll see at the end of it sometimes. And again, this mimics the GLP-1 hormone I just talked about, uh, helping you know with the gut feeling um, uh, fuller. Uh, it also helps reduce um, uh, blood sugar, uh, glucose. So that's why, obviously, it, it was a diabetes drug. So the brand name for that is Ozempic. I'm sure you've seen the ridiculously annoying Ozempic commercials, which I'm not going to sing the song, but you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, I never knew what it was for. I just always heard the damn song in my background. That was approved in December 2017. They started selling Ozempic uh, for diabetes in early 2018. It's been a very successful drug for Novo Nordisk since then. Uh, there is an injectable version um, uh, Ozempic's an injection. And there's another version uh, that's very, very similar. Uh, it's the injectable version as well, except for this version uh, has been uh, um, approved 
for weight loss, all right, for obesity. And this is called uh, Wegovy, W-E-G-O-V-Y. Wegovy, uh, exact same drug as Ozempic, but it's uh, the different indication. It's approved for obesity and weight loss. It was approved in June 2021. And a lot of studies show that it's about a 15% weight loss when you start taking this. A lot of uh, people have come out and say, if you stop it, you gain the weight back immediately. But again, some people tend to go back and forth with that. I don't think it's really uh, been around long enough to see if people go on it for five years and they stop, the weight loss comes right, or the weight gain comes right back on. Or maybe you've changed your, um, the way you live. Uh, you've changed your lifestyle along that way. So maybe you don't put it back on. I don't think we're deep enough into the studies to see if that's true. But what I've read and what, what a lot of studies show is that people do tend to gain the weight back once they go off uh, Wigovi. Um, and they also now, uh, uh, this is a, a Nova Nordisk as well, they have a late uh, stage trial for an oral version, uh, Rebelsis, uh, R-Y-B-E-L-S-U-S is, is how you spell that. Uh, and this would be an oral version. So taking a pill every day versus taking an injection once a week. I, you know, if I had to do this, and hopefully I don't ever have to do it, but if I did have to do it, I'd almost right to just take the injection once because I take a low dose cholesterol pill for, for my high cholesterol statin and I forget it often because I'm always running around in the morning doing something and I'd rather just take the damn injection, boom, be done. So um, th th this was the first one uh, approved. Wagovi was the first uh, one, uh, first weight loss drug approved in June, 2021. Uh, so this is uh, using this type of, uh, this type of drug. Um, we're going to talk about a couple others, but let me show you real quick. I want to show you a chart uh, of, of Nova Nordisk, and you can see it right here. Uh, a beautiful looking chart. I mean, this is a very large company. And I'm going to show you a long term chart to give you an idea of, of how well the stock has done over, over uh, many, many years. Um, and as you can see here, you know, go back, let's go back to the, the turn of century. In you know, around 2000, this stock was uh, split adjusted around $2 stock. Uh, we're about 160 right now. So, about 80x in that time frame, and uh, this again, this has just been a, a huge winner. It's a European company, um, and it's 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 the type of stock that I've watched for many many years. I may have owned it on and off. I don't remember. I've been investing for 25 years. I don't remember, uh, but it's one I wish I would just bought and held on to it. Uh, they've had a lot of breakthrough drugs over the years, uh, and again, uh, I, I think this market is just starting. Um, but real quick, before we go into the others, a couple of big numbers I want to throw out at you just to kind of get you an idea of, of, of where these uh, weight loss drugs, obesity drugs can be going. Uh, research firm Jeffries came out recently. And they said uh, by 2023, they think the obesity drug market uh, could hit $150 billion. To put that into context, the obesity drug market in 2022, last year, was $2.5 billion. And they think in the next eight years, it will be $150 billion. That's insane, insane uh, uh, growth. I think that's a little unrealistic, honestly. Uh, Morgan Stanley, uh, they came out, they think the obesity sales in 2030, so one year prior to that, be around $54 billion. Um, and again, they liken the uh, uh, obesity drug market right now uh, to the mid and late 80s for hypertension. And I talked about that earlier. And that became a $30 billion by the end of the 1990s. And obviously, through inflation and everything else on top of that. So it could be a much bigger market than that for sure. Uh, and, they, and Morgan Stanley went as far as to say that um, over time, about a quarter of obese people will engage with physicians uh, about this. And about 55% will receive some type of anti-obesity medication. Right now, only about 7% of people who have this issue engage at all. Not, not take medicine, but even engage with their physician about it. I think a lot of people are, are probably embarrassed uh, about their weight and they don't, they don't want to. Um, so uh, again, uh, it's a big, big upside. Um, there was a USC paper, uh, University of Southern California paper came out, uh, and they said the cumulative social benefits, uh, if, if it gets covered by insurance, by US, if U.S. Medicare coverage for new BC treatments over the next 10 years can reach $1 trillion, or about $100 billion a year, the benefits, uh, social benefits, because again, if people are healthier, they're, they're doing more, and it's about social benefits, more, you know, benefiting the social uh, um, uh, complex that we have here in the United States. $100 billion a year. That's a big freaking number. Um, and insurance companies aren't really covering it right now uh, for uh, weight loss. I think that changes because you think about the amount of money that insurance companies, uh, not just U.S. you know, run Medicare, 
uh, but individual private insurance companies, uh, your employer insurance company, uh, the amount of money they spend on obesity related ailments. And the numbers vary dramatically. It's very tough to say if this person fell and hurt their knee because of their obese or they just happened to fall. You never know. Uh, so it's, it's, it's tough to really put a number on it, uh, but the number is huge. And really when it comes to uh, more uh, chronic diseases, such as uh, chronic heart disease or diabetes, again, oftentimes directly related to obesity. Um, uh, there's another report that came out that shows that spending on drugs, uh, on these types of drugs was 2.1 billion in 2022. They expected it 10 billion by 2027. Uh, and it was only uh, half a billion in 2018. Again, very different numbers are all over the place right now because nobody really knows what's going to be approved. Uh, we have one drug approved now. We're talking about other ones that should be approved in the near future, but only one's approved right now. Um, and and the, the report also said they believe that 500,000 new prescriptions of GLP uh, agonists uh, issued for diabetes and obesity in February alone. So in February alone of 2023, 500,000 new prescriptions for GLP-1 agonists, uh, either for diabetes uh, or for weight loss, um, uh, were given out in February 2023. It's 152% increase over the same month last year. Shapur also wanted to say they believe that two to five new drugs will be approved in the next four years. Um, and we're going to talk about a couple of those uh, here right now. So we already talked about Novo. And uh, again, uh, one of those new drugs could be uh, Rebelsis, uh, if it's the, you know, the pill versus the injection, you know, that, that's a lot of people don't want to shoot themselves up with injections. So I understand that. The other big, big one coming out recently, uh, or, or in the news recently, I should say, is uh, uh, Monjaro. Uh, Monjaro, always a weird name for me to pronounce, but it's M-O-U-N-J-A-R-O. Uh, and this is uh, the, bra the brand name of an Eli Lilly drug. Eli Lilly stock symbol is LLY for anybody out there at home. Um, the, the, the drug is uh, uh, terz, terzipatide. terzipatide. Again, I can't pronounce any of these drug names. I don't know why they have them such crazy names. Anyway, you, 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 we'll put it up in a, on it here for you. Uh, but this is a, um, expected to receive FDA uh, approval for late loss by the end of this summer. Uh, it's an injectable as well, uh, very similar uh, to what came from Novo Nordisk. Um, in the patients that took Lily's weight loss drug, uh, they lost up to 35 pounds on average, uh, or 16% of their body weight. These are numbers that came out in April. I mean, it is, that's, that's a lot. So this is a little bit different because it's got the uh, GLP-1, the agonist, but it also has what's called the GIP. So it's, it, it, it mimics two uh, naturally producing hormones, not just one. Um, so they let the brain know that they're full, just like the other ones, but it's got two versus one. And that, that's the difference. And a lot of people believe uh, they could be actually a better pill uh, that comes out here from, from Lily. Um, so, you know, whereas Ozempic and Winogovi, uh, they only go after GLP-1. Um, but there's patients who took Ozempic in a 2021 trial. Uh, just with that, they lost about 15% of their body weight. As I mentioned, these April numbers uh, from Lily, uh, Manjaro, 16%. So not much difference, but, but again... We're early stages in this, folks. So I'm, I'm throwing out a lot of numbers here. So you know, probably heads probably spinning. Uh, but but we, you will see here that there's going to be, it's going to get better and better likely as, as new companies come out with new iterations of this drug. This year, uh, earlier this year in 2023, um, uh, they, they registered, uh, Lily registered a, a study where they're going to take 700 patients and they're going to have, uh, that are obese or uh, overweight um, and have health conditions. And they're going to um, study uh, their drug against Wigovi. But that results won't come out until 2025. So we've got a ways to go to see which one actually does better. But it's nice to see which one would do better because of, of obviously, you know, if you, it's, it's, it's a bit different. So again, th this is, is expected uh, to be approved, as I mentioned, um, in, uh, uh, by the end of the summer, potentially. And, you know, uh, we had a great presentation for myself and my colleagues from uh, one, one, of, one of my colleagues, uh, Dave Lashman, who's, uh, when it comes to this type of stuff, when it comes to healthcare medicine, is one of the geniuses in this industry uh, talking about it. And um, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it was great. He really, he really educated us on, on a lot of stuff that's going on there. But um, again, nothing here is a buyer sell recommendation. I'm not saying one's better than the other. These are just, we're just going in order. No specific order here for you, just, just to let you know. Uh, but again, uh, the Mangerno, that, that drug, which is uh, terzapatide, Again, I, I had no idea how to say that. 
uh, was originally approved as a diabetes drug uh, in 2022, but now they're looking at approval again for obesity as a weight loss drug. Um, they believe sales could reach $50 billion annually. That's a big amount, even though Lilly is a huge company, it's a big number. Um, so we'll see. Uh, Morgan Stanley believes that 22 billion total revenue uh, could be uh, coming from this as well. So again, big, big uh, variation of numbers for not only specific drugs, companies, but the sector itself. Uh, but the bottom line is, no matter who you ask, uh, huge growth potential uh, in, in this uh, un unfortunate situation we are in with obesity. Pfizer, uh, some PFE. We all know Pfizer, uh, you know, with uh, COVID vaccine. Uh, they're working on a pill as well for weight loss. This would be twice a day pill. Um, and, and again, when you, when you look at uh, taking a pill, I don't know if that's better or not, honestly. Uh, but some people, again, I think uh, you need to have both. And most likely, you'll probably see people taking a pill over the injection. Um, and they also have a second experimental uh, drug uh, in development. It's, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Uh, we'll put the name up. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a drug basically you take once a day versus twice a day. And um, what they're doing is they're going to they're going to put both these into late stage clinical trials uh, for both obesity and diabetes um, and expect to start next year, the one a day and the two a day. And what they'll probably go from there, whichever one comes out with better results, they'll, they'll move forward with that. But uh, they're going to put both both of them in there. But Pfizer is the one to keep an eye on only because um, not talking about it as much in the weight loss. Nova Nordisk and, and Lily are the two big ones only because Novo's got approval. Lily's, according to what all the studies say, on the verge, and I think so too, on the verge of potential approval. But maybe it's all priced in a stock. I don't know. It, it, it's tough to see until it actually happens. But uh, Pfizer's one that's out there that a lot of people aren't really uh, talking about right now. There's a couple other companies out there working on, on, on these drugs. There's about two dozen, according to reports, um, drugs out there that are potentially uh, approved will potentially get approved for weight loss. Um, not all of them will be by any means. Um, Amgen has one, AstraZeneca, uh, Viking Therapeutics, Structure Therapeutics, two companies we're about to talk about right now. Um, and uh, again, uh, but the big three really are Novo, Eli Lilly, Pfizer of the, of the big companies. And then you have some of the smaller ones. Viking Therapeutics, VKTX, very interesting company, about a $2.4 billion company. Um, they have four development programs for just treating obesity. Uh, and they are GLP-1 drugs. Uh, the drug is VK2735. Um, I like those much better than these stupid names. I, I, can, I can memorize that. Uh, but it was uh, through its phase one, it was safe. Everything looked well. It showed reduction in, in, in obviously, um, weight loss better than placebo. Uh, phase two trials plan to go out mid this year. So that would be really good. Uh, and they also initiated phase one trial recently for an oral. This is injection I'm talking about. For an oral formulation of uh, VK2735 as well. Um, so they're, they, they could be a major player. And, and if you, I'll show you the chart of the stock in a second. You're, like, you're going to be blown away. What I find very fascinating, though, um, with Viking Therapeutics is they have a potential blockbuster uh, in another area that I'm not going to dive into today, but um, it's called uh, non-alcoholic uh, steatohepatitis and called NASH for short. And it's uh, a VK2809 is the drug that, that's a potentially treating that. Uh, they have a phase 2B trial uh, study for NASH um, and a phase 2A trial for NASH um, for uh, a different version of it. So they're, they're a little bit further along. Uh, Grandview Research came out and they, they put out that that NASH treatment market uh, through 2023 will have a compound annual growth rate of above 39%, making it a nearly $16 billion market by the end of the decade. Uh, that's amazing growth. Um, and NASH right now has no medical treatment available for it uh, or to reverse uh, the fat buildup from it. It's, it's, a liver, it's a liver disease. A lot of times it can lead to liver cancer, which obviously is very, very, very uh, bad. Um, he, they, 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 the studies show it's underdiagnosed. Uh, and that up to 5% of the population, one in 20 people could have this disease. And again, uh, the, the, the numbers that have come out so far from VK2809 uh, have been really good. Uh, I show about 85% of patients experience a 30% reduction uh, of, uh, of fat in their liver, uh, liver fat. So if this could be the first drug approved for that, I mean, this is a huge, huge, huge potential upside 
um, for that. But again, keep in mind that going from phase two to phase three, about half the drugs go do that. And then you have to go from phase three to approval, a little over half can do that. So your odds, again, you're a coin toss and you got a coin toss again. Uh, so the, the, <laughs> we're way too early and I don't know. And by the time that's approved, it's, it's years down the road. You have to be a very patient investor. You have to hold through a lot of ups and a lot of downs, a lot of rumors, a lot of speculation. Uh, overall markets up, so overall markets down, overall biotech stocks up, down, down. I mean, it, it's 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 very, very, um, <laughs> it, it takes a certain type of person uh, to do that. Um, the, the research team over at Roth, though, came out, and, and these are some pretty interesting numbers. They said by 2035 uh, that VK2735, which is a weight loss drug, has potential of hitting 6.1 billion in sales, and that VK2809, which is the one for Nash, uh, potential of 3.1 billion in sales. Uh, you put those two together, you're at 9.2. This is about uh, just over a $2 billion company. If that happens, again, that's just 13 or 12 years away, folks. This is a long time. But obviously you price it in prior as approvals get there. But you, you just have to do the numbers in your head. At 9 billion, something like this, that's obviously would grow from zero sales to 9 billion. It'd be trading at probably 10 times sales at a minimum. You're looking at a $90 billion company. Right now, let's call it two. That's 45X in 13 years or 12 years. I would take that. This company could be at zero in 12 years as well. That's the risk. And again, this is no buy recommendations, no sell recommendations, no recommendation. I'm just sharing numbers. These are numbers that other research firms have put out and just sharing them with you. Um, they have about $136 million in cash right now. It's always important because these companies spend a ton of money on research and development. About 136 million cash. They burned through nearly 50 million uh, last year. So they're okay now, but they're, they'll have to raise more money. There's, there's no way they're gonna get to that, that uh, revenue generation that's gonna cover it. No, they'll have to raise more money. And when they come out and they do that, it's usually when a stock bounces for whatever reason and knocks the stock down. So again, you have to live through that probably a couple of times in the future. Um, but that is another one uh, I, that I think you should keep an eye on. And let me show you the chart here. Um, chart is going to be very interesting when you take a look at it because, again, uh, this is a company that's small and it's been in the news a lot as of late. A company that was down in the low single digits. Uh, you go back to uh, June of last year, uh, this company was around two bucks a share, and now it's at 25. Uh, you can see that chart, it's had a hell of a run. Um, and uh, it, again, it's still only a $2 billion company, but it's got a lot of press because a lot of stuff going on. Uh, with the Nash results that have come out re recently, uh, and also, again, with a lot of focus on uh, GLP-1 agonists and uh, the weight loss and obesity issue. Another one that went public recently is uh, Structure Therapeutics, and um, uh, this is a very interesting company as well. And let me just show you the chart here first, and then we can uh, dive into the company. Um, this is one that, again, uh, recent IPO, and uh, it's a company that Probably never heard of. Small company as well, a couple billion dollars. Uh, but here's a chart. You see, it went public in February. Uh, and uh, the first trading day, it, it actually opened well above the IPO price. I think it's like 75% from the IPO price. Gyrated between 21 and 28. And then uh, end of May, it broke out, ran to 36. Now we're up around 34, 35 today. So um, very, very, very aggressive chart, uh, to say the least. Structure Therapeutics, uh, they have a pipeline of, of, of drugs and um, uh, they have, again, some focus on obesity and weight loss. Uh, they have a GLP-1 uh, agonist as well. Uh, one, of the, one of the indications is for treatment of diabetes. Another indication is for the treatment of obesity. Uh, so they have one of both. They also uh, have a, a protein platform that kind of differentiates them a little bit from their competitors. Um, and they, they have uh, some other candidates for hyper... Or, or, um, hypertension, uh, heart failure, um, uh, pulmonary fibrosis. So a couple other, you know, obviously very major issues, especially with baby boomers getting older and aging the population. Um, so I, I like kind of what they're doing. Again, extremely, extremely aggressive. If I'm putting this on a scale of zero to one or zero to 10, 10 being the most aggressive, this is probably an 8.5 or nine folks. This is not for 90% of investors out there. And again, this isn't a recommendation. I'm just telling you, these are some other players in, uh, in, in the market here right now. Uh, and it's about a $1.3 billion company. So it's not that big of a company. The last one I want to talk about is, is a company that trades overseas. Uh, and this is uh, called Zealand, uh, Zealand Pharma. Uh, Zealand Pharma is about a $2 billion company. And uh, 
they make some peptide based medicines. Uh, they have 11 uh, programs underway, uh, 11 potential drugs uh, underway in their programs, uh, four for obesity. Uh, they have one in phase two trials. Uh, and uh, again, it's, it's similar to uh, Pfizer's, where it's a GLP 1 uh, as well uh, as a, a, a glucagon against uh, uh, ag agonists. There's two agonists there uh, that helps with glucose, weight control, um, and uh, it'd be. Uh, it could be a game changer as well. It's a $2 billion company, uh, trades overseas in Europe. Uh, again, extremely aggressive, folks. All these companies are extremely aggressive. You can talk about the Novos and the Pfizer's and the Lilies. These are multi $100 billion companies. It's a little bit different. They're not just relying on one or two drugs to be approved. They have multiple drugs approved already. So you have to make sure you differentiate those two. This is an area that I had to do a show on. And um, because I'm... I can almost guarantee you look back in 10 years from now, and it's normal for people to take weight loss drugs. It's very, very normal. And if we look back on, and I don't know which company it's going to be, and it's going to be several companies that become huge winners in this, uh, you'll see that they're huge winners and their stock price are huge winners. Uh, again, I don't know which one it is. Uh, once we figure it out, and we'll look at some small caps, my team and I, we will share that with our subscribers uh, 100%. Uh, we're just not there yet. I need to do more uh, interviews of our in-house uh, experts um, from Doc to Dave Lashmet and kind of get a big feeling and do our own boots on the ground research and see really where uh, the upside is going to be and then determine which I believe which stocks and build a basket around that. So we're not there yet, but I wanted to share it with everybody that this is a trend we cannot overlook. And again, it hits a lot of people uh, because with 40% of the world population overweight obese, you probably know somebody or you are that person. Uh, so again, if anything, kick in the ass and get out there or your partner or your friend or your family member, just go for a walk every day. Cut back on your eating. I, I tell you, uh, I study longevity almost every day. And it, it's a lot of it is what you put in your body and the way that you exercise and treat it. And you could live a long, healthier life. Not necessarily longer, but a healthier life uh, out there too. So I want to thank everybody for watching this. Uh, this was a bit of a special show with a lot of information here. Um, again, if you have any, any comments, any questions, please put in the comment section. Uh, please share. If you know somebody out there that's interested in this, please share with them. If you know somebody that's obese and maybe you know thinks that this will help them open their eyes, please share that with them as well. Uh, but we're out there to, again, always educate you, have some fun, and ultimately make some money, folks. And that's what we're here for. So again, thanks so much for watching. I'm Matt McCall. And that was making money. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.